Welcome to Chronosphere Fiction. This is your pilot, Daniel French. You're about to hear episode three of Corporate Punishment, written by Stephen Chisholm, The Mail Room. Once again, you're a fly on the wall in a beautifully decorated office, and our corporate overseer sits in his glass recording booth. Yes, Dad. No, Dad. <sighs> no. The input button should be on the top left of the remote. Well, why did you rent a DVD in the first place? Is cable not enough? Jeez, Dad. Okay. 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 Fine. I'll stop by after work. Okay. Love you, too. I said, love you too. Okay, bye-bye. Ah, yes. My folks are baffled by technology too. Jiminy, blind me, secretary. How do you sneak up on me like that? I spent my Saturday night trying to help my father open up a PDF over the phone. I know your pain. Help what? Who? Weren't, weren't you just walking your father through setting up the DVD player? Huh? Oh, gods, no. That's just one of my vocal warm-ups. My father died weeks ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be. He died doing what he loved most. Masturbatory asphyxiation. Excuse me? Horses. He was very adept at riding horses. Until his most recent excursion, where one caught him upside the noodle with a mean back right. Uh, hmm. Oh, I think you mean he had mastery in equestrianism. Oh, that too. But I think that kick to the head really ramped up the frequency of his noose augmented knob jobs. Ah, uh, the vulnerabilities of a pleasure seeker. Yep, we're done talking about this. How about we fire up the system and check in on Connie, uh, our subject? Hmm, her tracker is picking up motion, so it looks like we have a lot to catch up on. Let's pick up from where we left off, shall we? Well, yeah, this is how all of this works, isn't it? Watch the footage chronologically. Um, I don't think we covered that. Eh, it's not important. Just get on with it. Okay, okay. Just remember who's the boss around here. <clears throat> Subject number 2496G. Connie Bozeman. Date, Tuesday, October 4th. Time, 2.32 p.m. Location, Principal Zone Alpha. Basement, Mail Room. <laughs> What, uh, what the fuck happened? What's this? Letters? Mail? Massive pile of mail. Where the fuck am I? Oh, shoot! She's awake! Everyone! You all right? No. You just stay put, okay? Come, gather around! She's finally awake! Ah, oh, jeez, man. Quit it with all that shouting. I have a splitting headache. My apologies. <clears throat> She's awake. She's awake and talking, you all. Where am I? Last thing I remember, I was in the middle of an interview. I was... I was signing some papers. So, you signed the accursed pact, huh? Well, that explains why you're down here with us. The accursed what? Move, move out of the way. Oh, I say move, damn it. Uh, let the chief through. Did I hear correctly? Is she what? Oh, my golly, she is. Welcome. Welcome, you puerile parcel. Hold up now. What in the hell is happening? Prophecy, my fair lady. If we were to be permitted to gaze upon them, we would see that the stars are aligned, I'm sure. Before you address whatever nonsense you're on about, I'll need you to tell me why you've got an oversized stamp stuck over your eye. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, do you like my stamp? It, it's a picture of Van Gogh dropping his ear in a mailbox. I thought it was very clever. I, I tend to swap out the stamp from time to time, changing the aesthetic, see, if, if you will. But why are you wearing it over your eye? Perhaps this will explain. Oh, my God! 
God, your eye! What happened to your eye? I'll get to that. I just need to... Uh, the glue on the back of that can't be good for that wound. Oh, well, I suppose, but things here seem to operate a little different than the outside world. Outside world? Okay, I knew that recruiter had a culty vibe going on. No, no, listen, we're not a cult. You'll come to realize that in due time. However, I'm going to need you to humor me. Everyone goes through the phase of denial. Even me, when I fell through that shoot all those years ago, well, we'll, we'll, we'll give you time to recuperate. You, your head must be splitting, but uh, when you recover, I'll explain to you the lay of the land. That, that sound good to you? How do I know I can trust you? You don't have much of a choice, now do you? Uh, I suppose not. Okay. Pigeon, won't you escort this woman? Say, what's your name, by the way? Connie Bozeman. Miss Bozeman, pleased to meet you. I'm Chief Emil, the commander of the mailroom, the leader of the lucid-minded dwellers of the deep. Uh, hmm. Nice to meet you, I suppose. Now, Pigeon... Bring Miss Bozeman to the dorms and be sure she gets the freshest stack of invoices to rest on. You got it, boss. Are there no beds? Okay, everyone back to your business. We'll reconvene at tonight's council. And it's been a pleasure meeting you, Miss Bozeman. I will see you when you're well and rested. Yeah. Right this way, Miss Bozeman. It's Bo... Sure. <sighs> This, uh, this is certainly the last thing I thought would happen when she fell down that hole. Who are all those people? I'm sure you don't need that many people in a mailroom. And why do they all look so malnourished? Cowards. A lot of them. Most haven't even ventured beyond the ground floor. These people clearly need help. And that guy with the stamp over his empty eye socket? That can't be in compliance with OSHA regulations. Chief Amel is a tough bastard. Out of all the protectors of the parcel, he's the only one of whom I have a modicum of respect for. Protectors of the parcel? Sounds like an Indiana Jones flick. <laughs> you know what happens when you surmise, right? That's it. I've given up on trying to figure out what's going on. Just play the damn tape. You got it. Let me just fast forward through this sleeping bit. <sighs> Uh, oh, no. So it wasn't a dream. Not as much a dream for you as it was for me. Christ, how long have you been looming over me like that? Chief Emil ordered that I keep watch over you. Not every day that you get the honor of keeping guard over the Chosen One. Chosen One? The fu Is it possible I speak with this Chief Emil once more? Yes, certainly. The Chosen One gets as the Chosen One desires. The weekly council meeting of the protectors of the parcelers is nearly underway. We were just waiting on one more attendee. Let me guess. Me? Of course, wise Chosen One. Yeah, just get me over there so I can get some answers. Right away. Follow me, Chosen One. She's arrived. The Chosen One has arrived. Apostles be praised. Quiet, quiet, everyone. The council meeting can now be underway. Since our descent into this violent plain, we hapless few, we of the demoted, have been forced to dwell beneath the girth of this great and terrible tower. Severance Inc. has sought to stamp out resistance. Yet, here we stand. Um, excuse me. Can you kindly tell me what the fuck is going on? Through whispers from the gods in the form of cryptic letters and envelopes, we have begun to piece together our path to salvation and freedom from this plane. Come, all of you. Gaze upon the product of our faith. Look upon this drawing on the wall and see how close we've come to realizing our destiny. Just looks like a bunch of fighting stick figures on the wall. Perceptive, Connie Bozeman, but take a closer look. Do any of these stick figures look familiar? Nope. Here, Connie, this image here? 
This person wielding the sword of synergy, the weapon destined to strike down the man on high, does she not bear a striking resemblance to you? No, still looks like a stick figure. But that one at least has hair. I'll give you that. How do you explain this, then? Your resume, Connie. It came down the chute with you. Says here you're a master of kendo, the art of sword fighting. Kendo instructor. An instructor for children who wanted to become the next He-Man. On this plane, Connie, newcomers will eventually come to find that their abilities far exceed those established on the earthly realm. Earthly realm? Okay, I'm, I'm done. How do I get out of here? Quiet all. Remember how infantile you all acted when you came down that chute all those years ago? Years? Yes, Connie. We've all tried to escape this tower. We've stacked packages upon packages to scale the chute, only to be met with a tidal wave of mail. We've tried tunneling through the wall, only to find that they are more durable than any instrument at our disposal. Even those of us who braved the office space above haven't been able to find a way out. Windows? Impenetrable. Phone lines? Dead to all but internal calls. Internet? All access blocked. There is no communication between the earthly realm and this plane. All this talk about planes. I thought I was signing up to work for a freight company or something, not joining some Star Trek fan club. Believe it or not, Connie, but once you are sent down that chute, you are transported to another plane of existence, one far more frightening than the one you're used to. And unfortunately, I realize the only way to convince you of the truth is to take you into the tower. That is the path for which you are destined. You can free us all, Connie. By slaying the commander of this realm, you can free us all. I won't be slaying anyone, but I'd certainly like to have a word with this commander. Ah, yes, the CEO. He is the cursed heart and wicked soul of this plane. Climbing the tower and claiming his life will in turn claim our freedom. Right. Well, once you've all had your coffees and sobered up, I'd love for you to take me to the top. So, Connie, chosen one, you agree to take up this quest? Yeah, yeah. I'll go have a word with the CEO about getting out of here. While I'm at it, I'll have a talk with him about his drug screening policies. I think the company's due for a revision. The chosen one has agreed to lend her aid. Tomorrow, we will bestow upon her the Sword of Synergy. And I, personally, will be her escort as we ascend the tower. Tomorrow? I want out of here now. Your enthusiasm and bravery is commendable. But we should ensure we are fully rested before beginning our quest. The council is dismissed. Dismissed? That was like five minutes long. And besides, I just woke up. Welp, that should be enough for today. Pretty uneventful as far as these things go. Uneventful? I felt my mind fracturing during that entire exchange. I know I said I was through questioning this operation, but this is ridiculous. Are you telling me there are other dimensions? Well, yeah. Have you never seen the documentary about those smoke lizards? Smoke lizards? Are you talking about The Mist? The fictional movie starring the guy from Zack and Reba? Think of it like that. Except the spread of this plane is almost completely contained within the skyscraper. I was initially inclined to agree with the subject that these folks operate solely on a diet of Ambien and Zyprexa. But the fact that there are other planes of existence... Makes you wonder, don't it? It most certainly... Makes you wonder if there's a dimension out there where they actually followed through with Gladiator 2, Christ Killer. Uh, sure. Listen, I've really been procrastinating on scheduling this whole funeral thing for my father. So if you wouldn't mind... Oh, you want me to leave? Well, not before I give you this list of vendors to call. 
I'm leaning towards this place, Carl's Crematory, Funeral Parlor, and Radio Repair. But I wanted you to call them to see if they're willing to extend their Labor Day sale until Tuesday. Of course. And before I get you that list, I, of course, have one more thing to do. <coughs> Subject, 2496G Observation Terminal, signing out. What has Connie signed herself up for? Your corporate overseer was voice acted by Frank Guglielmelli. His secretary is voice acted by Rosanna Jimeno. Connie Bozeman is voice acted by Caitlin Curtis. The Russian mail clerk is voice acted by Deborah Cristobal. Mail chief Emil is Van Riker. Pigeon is Cindy Stevens. Corporate punishment is written by Stephen Chisholm. Production, sound design, and music is by Daniel French at Fishbonius Sound Design. Thank you for once again flying on the chronosphere. Until next time, keep your cosmos clean. <laughs>